Nilesh, thanks for joining us in the studio today. Uh, thanks for having me, Julian. Yeah. To get us started, we'd love for you to introduce yourself to the audience and tell us a little bit more about Gurukul and what the goal of it is and how it helps customers today. Oh, absolutely. So Gurukul, we are a security analytics company that is founded in uh, you know, data science uh, that delivers uh, you know, radical clarity for about cyber risk to organizations, right? Um, you know, I'm the co-founder and, and chief technology officer uh, for Gurukul. And essentially what Gurukul does is that we analyze uh, you know, enterprise data at scale uh, using machine learning and artificial intelligence. Um, so instead of getting tons of alerts, uh, you know, which happens typically in a security operations center, you actually get real-time actionable information about true threats. One of our customers, which is, uh, you know, an $18 billion, uh, you know, Fortune 500 company, uh, just most recently mentioned that, you know, we were able to reduce the signal-to-noise ratio by almost 99%, right? Um, and our platform is really different, uh, you know, than the rest because essentially, uh, you know, we, it confirms to your business requirements. Uh, so you don't have to, you know, compromise on, uh, you know, on your data as well as your alerts. Yeah, no, that sounds really cool. So I'd love to see a demo of what it looks like and how it helps customers like the one you just mentioned. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, would, uh, I would love to give you a demo as well. So Julian, this is our, uh, you know, our platform, uh, you know, which is uh, Gurukul Complete TDR platform, Threat Detection, Investigations, and Response. The demo that I'm showing today, it completely runs off uh, Snowflake. So Snowflake uh, is our preferred choice of, uh, of data lake in the, in the back end. As you could see here, you know, once you, know, you log into the platform, you know, you're able to see some of the out-of-the-box dashboards. The platform itself has its own role-based access control. So, you know, the analyst or whoever user is logging into the platform, he or she would be able to, you know, see their uh, their view of the, the platform, right? You know, right now I'm an administrator, so I can see everything within, within the platform. So real quick, as you could see here on the dashboard, uh, you know, there are a lot of risk scores that are tied to various different elements within, uh, you know, within the platform, right? So the entire platform itself is risk-driven. Uh, you know, risk is uh, sort of fundamental to our platform. Every entity, every user, uh, you know, device, name it, uh, you know, gets a risk score between one to hundred. Hundred being the the highest, right? So real quick on the dashboard, it will give you some details in terms of you know what are some of the risky assets within your enterprise, risky identities, uh, you know, top endpoint alerts, network alerts, you know, vulnerabilities, any phishing attempts, um, identity and threat detection based alerts, uh, you know, MITRE attack framework, and so on, right? So. Like I said, right? I mean, you know, we encompass you know various different kinds of use cases across uh, across the board, right? Now, from here, you can actually drill down and see additional details. So, you know, let's assume uh, you know I'll pick uh, you know one of these endpoints here, which is a desktop, which has got a risk score of ninety five. So, once I click on it, so it gives you a contextual view of that particular entity, right? So, in this case, you know, it's a desktop. Uh, you know, I can click on and see some of the additional details. Um, so, as you could see here, you know, it gives me what kind of machine it is. Uh, you know, it's a workstation. Uh, you know, which network it is on. What's the MAC address? You know, first seen, last seen, and so on, right? And this can come from you know various different sources. It can even uh, you know come from uh, you know the device itself. It can come from you know your CMDB uh, you know uh, stores and so on, right? Real quick, uh, you know, if you scroll down on the on the timeline here, you know, as you could see here, you know, there are various different anomalies that are triggered, right? So these are behavioral anomalies that got triggered for this particular machine. Essentially, be it for uh, you know for any device or machine, we do behavior analysis wherein you know we create sort of a baseline behavior of uh, you know that particular machine or an entity over a period of time, which is configurable. It could be you know three months, six months, you know what have you, right? And uh, we are not a black box solution, unlike you know some of the other products out there. So what I mean by that is that you can actually drill down into any of these anomalies and see additional details in terms of what were the attributes that uh, you know that triggered this particular anomaly or uh, or alert for that matter, right? Again, as you could see here, uh, you know once I you know click on this, it gives you you know there was uh, you know a proxy file download which is followed by a high severity endpoint alert, right? It also gives you analytical features on on the right here. So this actually helps, you know, analyst pinpoint, you know, what are some of the uh, the attributes in my data set that I need to look at because these are the ones, you know, that came out, you know, through our machine learning based models that okay that this is what triggered this uh, this anomaly, right? And you, you can actually see that in here, right? So as you could see here for for this particular anomaly, uh, you know, there was a payload that was executed, right? And then from here, you know, you can um, certainly take actions, any mitigation actions. Or if an analyst feels that you know that they want to investigate further, then you know they can just click on the investigate tab here, and then get into additional details. So this is our one-stop shop search to search for anything within the data lake, right? And in this case, it's Snowflake. Uh, you know, as you could see here, raw uh, you know activities or or transactions, which are your you know your log sources, 
you can even search for users, you can search for entities, accounts, uh, you know, peer groups and so on, right? So everything from, you know, one singular console in here, right? So if you look at, uh, you know, some of the data here, uh, you know, as I was talking about, right? I mean, it's a, it's a malware detection, right? You know, most of the traditional systems, what, you know, what they would do is that, you know, it would go ahead and, and probably, you know, quarantine the device, right? Um, and that's the extent of, uh, of that mitigation, right? But, you know, there could be, you know, other areas that got impacted as well, right? You know, just this one alert or this, this anomaly won't give you uh, sort of the complete picture. But with, uh, with our platform, you know, you're able to go beyond that. Remember, like I was saying that, you know, we actually link all of those data silos together. And that's what you would see here. So for instance, uh, you know, this particular machine is, you know, tied to a particular employee, right? So from here, I can actually go into, you know, the employee's profile as well, similar to, you know, what we did with the, uh, you know, with the machine, with the workstation. And uh, real quick, as you could see here, I mean, this particular machine that got infected, it, uh, you know, belongs to Claire. And now you can get additional details around, around that user as well, right? Claire, well, even she got risk rated higher, obviously, because, you know, her machine got infected as well. But it's not just that, right? Apart from that, as you could see here, you know, there were also some abnormal logins to, you know, some of our cloud systems. In this case, uh, you know, Azure ID sign-in, right? I mean, there was a sign-in from a, from a risky country. So this is potentially, you know, account compromise and a credential that got accessed, uh, right? So, so this actually helps you provide sort of the entire picture in one singular, you know, console within, within the platform. And, you know, like I mentioned earlier, so even with the, with the users as well, you can actually see additional details in terms of, you know, who the user is. In this particular case, uh, you know, Claire, she's a personal banker, you know, in liquidity department, uh, for instance, right? So this is potentially a really good user that, you know, could potentially be targeted by threat actors, right? And then from here, you can actually go ahead and, and take any respond actions as well, right? So, you know, we have a complete case management, uh, you know, system built within the platform. So all of these different anomalies actually get contextualized into one single case. Uh, again, unlike some of the other traditional security systems where, you know, they create individual alerts for each of those transactions, which then, you know, creates the problem of, uh, you know, tons of alerts, which, uh, you know, the security analysts have a hard time trying to figure out, right? Uh, but with us, what we do is that all of this data is contextualized. So all of these anomalies essentially create just, uh, you know, one case for you, right? And, uh, you know, that's what you see within our case management. So it's easier, it's manageable cases. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, we actually give only true detections. And then from here, uh, you know, you can trigger off an automated playbook as well, uh, you know, if needed, or close a case and, you know, the entire case workflow from here. So you're able to mitigate the entire uh, threat chain, uh, if you will, and not just one aspect of that threat, right? Uh, so that's why it's a lot more, you know, holistic. And there are a number of different things that are at play here, right? From, uh, you know, data integrations, we got, you know, thousands of data sources that we integrate with. Uh, you know, I talked about machine learning based models, hundreds of playbooks that, uh, you know, that get triggered from the, from the platform. Yeah. And uh, the beauty is that everything runs on, on top of Snowflake. Uh, so we actually leverage, uh, you know, a lot of those um, amazing, you know, compute capabilities of, uh, of Snowflake as well. Right? And you mentioned all of this is running in Snowflake which hopefully also enables you to not just build a lot of integrations and bring a lot of data together, but maybe build some additional functionality within the platform that adds a little bit of advanced functionality for uh, users that are running their data in Snowflake. Is there anything around that that you also want us to demo today? Absolutely. Like I mentioned, right, I mean, uh, you know, uh, obviously the entire platform runs on, on Snowflake. Uh, but other than that, we also have, uh, you know, capability where you could actually search into your Snowflake data lake and not just, you know, one workload, but, you know, across the board. Um, so typically, I mean, you might uh, know better, right? I mean, you know, there might be multiple instances of Snowflake within an organization, uh, you know, used by security teams, by, you know, other teams such as, you know, maybe HR uh, and, and operational teams or what have you, observability. Um, so within our platform, you know, we actually have the capability and I can, uh, you know, go that in here, for instance, right? If I go into investigate, as you could see here, there is a federated search uh, option. So this option allows you to actually search Snowflake directly from this console itself. So earlier when, you know, we were talking about uh, linking all of these data sets together, you know, once you link all of this data information together, uh, you know, we are talking about terabytes and petabytes of data, right? Um, so you don't really need to analyze all of that data, especially the contextual data. You know, once you are doing your investigations, if you feel that, okay, you need uh, additional data points to look at, for right from this console, and that's what I just did here, uh, you know, you could search into a Snowflake uh, data lake as well, right? And that's what you can see here, right? So in this case, I've put in, uh, you know, one of my tenants, which is, uh, you know, Snowflake Planet Bank here. 
and uh, I was able to search on those transactions, right? And as you could see here, it summarizes the transactions and what have you as well. Awesome. So I think thanks for showing me that additional functionality. And I like how sort of as a security analyst, right, I still have access to all my Snowflake data and I even can search for it while still staying in the platform that you guys have added governance and security on top of as well. It was really cool to see how you're able to drill down and get so much uh, information by bringing data together and then also by being able to prioritize everything by having that machine learning embedded into the platform. Now, if someone wants to learn more about uh, Gurukul, where should they go? Yeah, the easiest and best way to uh, you know reach out to us is through gurukul.com. Awesome. And of course, we did have a longer interview where we talked about Nilesh's uh, journey as a founder, how Snowflake continues to help them evolve their platform. And so make sure you check that out by checking out the link in the description. And of course, if you want to learn more about how to continue building in Snowflake, check out developers.snowflake.com. And to keep hearing stories like this one and see cool demos, make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channels. Thanks, everyone.